Alrighty tubers, we're back to the MagnaForce gas powered air compressor here. Been using it for quite some time. It's been working awesome. Really no issues with it until I went to use it about, uh, about a, two, two and a half, three weeks ago. I wanted to start it up and it would not fire. Um, you'd put some carb cleaner in the intake and you can get it to fire and pop off but it will not pull any fuel up from the tank whether the screen in the tank is plugged or the diaphragm on this carburetor the pump diaphragm has finally just died I'm not sure what's wrong with it um, I actually had a new assembly on hand Let's see if it's the same it's the same thing well no it's a little different see if this is compatible or not. If not, then we're going to get into something else with it here. So it's not adjustable, which I do not like. I bought this for a rotor tiller. I was hoping I could use it on this guy, but I'm not seeing enough similarities between the two. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to use this one. Well, by the magic of editing and being able to pause the recording, I got the exhaust off. <laughs> that exhaust wanted to come off. Not at all. I finally got it off. I took the exhaust off because I'm going to pull this diaphragm off. I'd rather pull that exhaust off than pull the carburetor off. Though, in the last video, I took the carburetor off last time, so... I do know what that entails, and I'm wondering if that would have been easier. But, we're here now, so... I just want to check on the diaphragm on this. See if it's... See its condition. See if it's something simple. Or if it would need a whole new diaphragm and whether or not I'm just going to rebuild it or not, because the throttle plate, it's got a little bit of wear in it, but it's not terrible. Because that carburetor is close, but not close enough for me. It would work, and it does have an adjustment. The adjustment's just not where it is on the older style carburetor down here. So, it would work, but I would rather see what that carburetor is before we go and replace it with a carburetor that doesn't quite match, because on this style, it's, instead of having that there, it's got the, the pull style choke. This one's got the flip style choke, and to run this style, you actually need the levers and stuff off of the newer style five uh, five horsepower Briggs. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How did that even run? First off. Goodness gracious. Here's your, your, here's your pump diaphragm. These are crispy as I'll get out. That was probably the only one actually pumping or doing anything. That one might, may have been as well. But listen. Oh, that's stuck now. I'm going to guess that that's probably the uh, issue right there. <laughs> so... We're going to go ahead and give it a try. We're going to replace that pump diaphragm and see what that gets us because it's obviously crispy and if we can save this carburetor, let's go ahead and do it. Because this engine's in really, honestly, great shape. Um, the amount of hours I put on it after we got it running, the thing runs awesome. Uh, check the oil here. Really doesn't burn any oil at all. The fact that it's time for another oil change, I've run it that much. 
oil's already pretty dark. I, since the last video you guys saw, I've probably put 10, 20 hours, something like that on it. Maybe less. But I've, I've put a good amount of hours on this thing, and this engine doesn't just sit, sit and idle easily all the time. It's, it works hard pushing this pump, so. Now, I'm very, very happy with the condition of the engine. I've had these older engines smoke and use tons of oil. It's not using any. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and stop it there for now, tubers. I'm going to locate a new pump diaphragm. I'm sure they'll be cheap. I remember Home Depot used to sell them, so maybe they still do. But, yeah, that's it for now. We have a good one, tubers. See ya. Bye. Well, tubers, I had a bit of an idea here. <laughs> Well, why don't I just steal that diaphragm out of the new, the new carburetor? And if it works, then I'll buy a new diaphragm or two to have on hand. Stick one of the new ones in that new carburetor. And then just have another on hand. That's my thought, and that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to go ahead and pull this guy back apart again. Looks like it's the same diaphragm, same style. Let's see what can I prop this up with. Prop that up a little bit so it doesn't. Sorry, it was leaning this way anyway, so. That song stuck in my head now. Let's see. This is the same thing. As I've shown in the two-stroke rebuilds, there's two parts to this. There's a diaphragm and a gasket. The diaphragm is first and gasket, it looks like. Even though part of it works here and a part of it works there. I'm gonna need to spray this guy down, make sure it's clean. This engine and compressor from what year? I can't remember. It's uh, 83. So it's, it's got some age on it. I'm gonna go get some steel wool. I'm gonna clean these surfaces and make sure those ceiling areas for those for the diaphragm are clean. So, be back in a second. Alrighty, I'm back. As you can see, things are a little cleaner now. You can see that little circle right there's a lot cleaner. I scrubbed that out a little bit. Pull the diaphragm off this guy. Double check it's a match. Double check it's a match and then get it on there. Guy sticks out a lot more, which is good. This guy's nice and soft and supple. It's looking good there. Let's see, we put a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil. It's just something I do. I have this stuff on hand. I put it on all mating surfaces when I put the carburetor together like this, whether it's motorcycle or what. There's rubber or a gasket or anything. I put a little bit of that stuff on there. What does it do? I don't know. Does it do anything? Probably not. It's just something I like to do. Not spilling my marble. I wonder what came first. Marvel Superheroes or Marvel Mystery Oil? I'm gonna guess Mystery Oil. Seeing a little bit of something there on the surface. There we go. A little schmutz or something. 
wait, wait. Hush. Be quiet. Just a little different because this one's got a bolt here and here. Let's see. The difference between the two is this one bolts here and the other one bolted there. So, no difference to me as long as it works. Let's see that diaphragm. I didn't have that bolt hole there, but it's okay. Get it bolted back together. See what happens. Be back in a second. Alrighty, so it's not permanently put together. It's uh, just kind of temporarily hand tightened. Everything's still movable on it. Uh, one other thing, another design change I saw between this carburetor and the other is this one's straight through. It is straight through the carburetor where the older style carburetors, and I, all Briggs and Stratton carburetors I've looked at, have this swirly thing through it. Whether you could pull it, pull that out of that carburetor and put it in this one, I'm not sure. I would definitely run that swirly thing in there again though. I wouldn't want to run it without it. See if it starts and stays running now. Call that a success. It's actually running really good. Um, I would very comfortably say the best I've ever heard it run and the easiest it's ever started. So we're going to keep that diaphragm in there. We're going to go ahead and put that heat plate back on, get everything screwed down and tight. And All right. We'll be back. Start her up one more time. Got the air filter on it now, and it's never really started super easy with the air filter on. So this will be a good test to see if that diaphragm has really helped it. Having to sit here and tune a little bit, it is definitely running a lot, lot healthier than it was. That was an easy start with the air filter on, just pulled the choke and it started right up. Um, yeah, 
pretty happy with it. I'm just going to sit here and tune it for the next little bit. But I'm going to call it there. Next thing I'm going to do on this is probably do something with the exhaust. Either just replace that pipe or try running it. See if I could run it maybe down here and down the ways and see if I can make it a little quieter out of the exhaust. Because running a longer pipe, is it's going to cause a little back pressure as well. But running a longer pipe down there is just naturally going to make it a little quieter. I want to see if doing something like that might, uh, I don't know, either running it down there or just over and back and putting the muffler here or something. I don't know. Maybe I'll just put another muffler on it and call it good. But that'll be it for now, tubers. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one.